Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hall here. Thank you for joining us for another Monday market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning. Get you ready for the week. Stocks to watch, economic news that you need to see. And it may not seem like it, but inflation is actually coming down. Yes, prices are still higher than they were last year, but only at a 4% higher pace. That is a lot better than the 9% inflation we were seeing just last year. And that drop is the fastest in more than 40 years. Now, one member of the Fed thinks it's only the beginning, and that could have huge implications for how you invest. I'll show you why. And the stocks I'm watching for the fastest drop in inflation in over 100 years. Stick around after that. I'll show you the stocks I'm watching this week, the economic news you need to see. But first, all you out there in the nation know real estate will always have a special place in my portfolio. I started out as a commercial real estate analyst, and no other asset class has created as much legacy wealth as real estate. But nearly every side of the real estate market has been been crushed this year and last on those higher interest rates. Here we see returns by property type from the National Association of REITs. REITs plunged 25% last year and are down almost 6% this year. In fact, right now, the only safe place in real estate seems to be single family rentals. Median home prices have dipped a little this year, but are on the way back up and are only 10% from that peak. With more than half of homeowners locked in on their mortgage rates under 4%, nobody is selling their home. And current mortgage rates around 8% means millions are still stuck renting rather than buying. Now, I've owned rental real estate and can tell you, if you haven't known the joy of being woken up at 3 a.m. to light the pilot light on someone's water heater, then you haven't known the bliss that is managing your own rental properties. For that reason, I'm investing now through the Arrived Homes platform instead. Instead of investing in funds of properties, you get to invest directly in individual homes. Each investment is a separate LLC, so you have a direct investment. You earn dividends on the rental income paid out every quarter with dividends from 3 to 8% on rent and then price appreciation when the property is sold. Upside price returns have been as high as 136%, usually over 5 to 7 years. I know you have a lot of questions. I know I sure did before I started investing, so I'm going to link to Arrived Homes in the description below. Look for that link or just scan the QR code here for more information. Now, one thing though, the homes available for investment sell out fast. So make sure you click through and get on that notification list. I missed out on a lot of good properties for not being on that notice list. So look for the link below. Back to that main topic though. And whenever I talk about inflation coming down, people rush to the comments to tell me I'd better check my facts. And while it might not feel like it and prices are higher than they were last year, the year over year inflation rate is slowing. And that's the important thing right now. Maybe the important thing right now because inflation is what's gonna determine whether the Fed can stop hiking rates and eventually start cutting rates if the economy slows. Here in Fed data, we can see that the increase in the consumer price index, that CPI measure of inflation, surged from 1.4% a year in January 2021. So January 2021, the year over year inflation was just 1.5% to almost 9% by May 2022. That was the fastest increase in inflation ever recorded, and it was in response to that $5 trillion plus in money printing during the pandemic. With the Fed stomping on the brakes with its fastest rate hikes in 40 years last year, it's managed to bring that inflation rate down to 3.7% a year as of September. Uh, pace is also expected to slow further to 3.3% when we see the October CPI numbers here on Tuesday. Now that's important because inflation is the Fed's main boogeyman. Okay, The only thing that can keep the Federal Reserve, the nation's central bank, from pausing its rate hikes and eventually cutting rates to support the economy and boosting stocks. The members of the Fed have a target rate of 2%, so they're saying they don't want their prices to rise more than about 2% a year. They expect that inflation rate to get there sometime in 2025. Here we see in the Fed dot plots released during its meetings. If inflation does continue to slow, like we've seen, the Fed can ease off the brakes a little bit then and even lightly tap that accelerator if the economy's engine starts to sputter. We're starting to hear support of that idea from a lot of the Fed members, including Chair Powell himself. In fact, one member of the Fed thinks that inflation could drop and fall faster than it has at any point in the last 100 years. Right now, that record is held by 1982, when the pace of inflation fell nearly 5% from 8.3% pace in January to 3.7% year over year to begin 1983. Now, back then, it was Fed Chair Volcker's whatever it takes moments, boosting interest rates past 20% to kill inflation of the 70s, even if it meant a painful recession in 1981 through 82. But speaking to CNBC last week, Chicago Fed President Goolsby said the fastest drop in inflation rates in any year was 1982. We'll see what happens over the next couple of months. We might equal that fastest drop in inflation in the last century, and we are making progress. Goolsby went on to call this the golden path, and while I think the economy is going to weaken further than he expects, either way could be very good for stocks. 
even on a little bit more weakness in the economy. If inflation does continue to fall, the market is going to take that as a sign that the Fed can step in, cut rates, and is going to have a lot of room to cut those rates. Remember, the Fed raised interest rates by the fastest pace in 40 years last year, raising from almost zero up to 5.5%. It's going to be able to cut those rates, support the economy, which is also going to support stocks. Some of this is already happening. The market expectations in the CME FedWatch tool there online for a rate hike by the January Fed meeting have fallen from 25% last month. So just last month, 25% odds according to market expectations for futures pricing were that 25% odds was that the Fed was going to raise interest rates once again by their Jan January meeting. That's fallen to just 9% a, a week ago. Okay, so the Fed, the market now expects the Fed to be completely on hold, not raise rates anymore because of how inflation has come down. The market now sees a chance of a rate cut as early as May or an, and likely more likely in June. Now, on this view of lower inflation and interest rates next year, I'm watching three themes and 11 stocks. So really three big top, big picture themes and 11 stocks within those that you want to be watching for before this inflation story really takes off and takes those stocks higher. First here would be real estate with the Schwab US REIT ETF ticker SCHH. Now this is a fund of real estate investment trusts. You can also invest in something like the Vanguard real estate ETF, that VNQ that we've talked about here on the channel. This one pays by Schwab pays a 3.6% uh, yield, 3% 3.6% dividend yield. And why I like it is because it's very much like a lot of the other REIT funds, the VNQ, a lot of those others, but this one only charges you a, an expense ratio of 0.07%. Okay. Whenever you're buying an ETF, you want to look at those expense ratios, what you're being charged by management to hold those funds. And you want to go usually with the lowest one because the returns are very much similar uh, among those. We've talked about real estate has been slammed by those higher rates falling 25% last year and even more this year, highly leveraged property value values have come down and could be ready to bounce when those rates start coming, coming down. I also have positions in individual real estate stocks. Some of the ones I've been watching here at Crown Castle is a leading, uh, a leading holder of those cell tower uh, real estate. It's been hit hard this year, but is in still in very good operational condition. Stag Industrial is one I've watched for a long time, one I've held for a long time, a dividend of four and a quarter percent, very strong industrial and warehouse REIT here. And of course, those warehouses and industrial properties benefiting from that shift to e-commerce, all those things that get delivered, they need to be stored somewhere in those warehouse properties. One not doing so well, but I still continue to hold Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW, got slammed last Friday on really no news at all. So we're really wondering what's happening with this stock, whether it's just a short attack or some news that hasn't come out lately, but this is the, the largest owner of hospital properties in the United States. I think it's mostly an interest rate story and should bounce back very strong when those interest rates start coming down. I'm also watching growth stocks here with the QQQ, the trust that tracks the NASDAQ 100 list of, of mostly tech stocks, some other stocks in there. So if you're going, going for a growth ETF, you might look for the Vanguard Growth Fund, the VUG, or another one more explicitly geared towards growth. But growth stocks will also do well as those lower interest rates increase the valuation for future cash flows. Now, folks, what you got to understand understand here why tech stocks and a lot of these growth names have sold off so much over the last year and a half is one measure, measure of a stock's value called the discounted cash flows. The DCF involves finding the present value of estimated future cash flows, right? So you look at these growth stocks that are just now starting to, to generate those cash flows. You, you estimate how much of those cash flows are, flows are in the future, and then you reduce them back to find a present value. What the stock is worth now based on those future cash flows, you reduce them back by an interest rate. So as that interest rate goes up, the valuation, the more you discount those cash flows goes up as well. And, uh, and those cash flows, those, that present value goes down. All right. So translation, that means as interest rates increase, the value of those growth stocks with most of their cash flows still expected years out, that's going to decrease. And that's what we've seen over the last year and a half with a lot of these growth stocks. And of course, vice versa, when the rate uh, rates decrease, when those rates start decreasing next year, those future cash flows from a lot of these growth stocks that have been very popular over, over the last th three years through the pandemic are going to become very popular once again. Now, in this growth stock theme, you know I love SoFi Technologies. I own a big stake in this. It's probably the first or second largest stake in my portfolio. Ticker SOFI here has done very well, did very well on its earnings, sold off a little bit recently. I think it's a great opportunity to pick up more shares.
I also like Palantir Technologies here, PLTR, as well as Snowflake, ticker SNOW. In that growth stock theme, we recently talked about Snowflake actually benefiting from higher interest rates as well, just on all the cash it holds on its balance sheet. It is now earning, you know, uh, tens of millions of dollars in interest expense or interest income just on that cash that it's holding in the balance sheet. Also within that growth stock theme here, but with an extra kicker are going to be electric vehicle stocks. Okay, not only has EV been hit on that valuation idea with the higher rates, meaning lower stock value. So a lot of these stocks in these electric vehicle related stocks have seen their valuation just plummet because of that discounted cash flow with their cash flows well out into the future, discounting them at those higher interest rates. But also those higher interest rates have punished consumer demand to buy these cars. Okay, obviously electric vehicles much more expensive than a traditional uh, combustion engine vehicle. And the increase in the average rate on a car loan has been obscene. Jumping here, you see from 3.8% in December 2021 to nearly 8% last month. Okay, so the, the average cost uh, interest rate on a car loan has almost has doubled here in the last year. Uh, I don't know how anybody affords a new car, let alone even a used car anymore. I've got my to used Toyota Camry out there in the parking lot that is expensive enough. As those rates come down though, even a little, not only is that valuation going to go up from that discounted cash flows formula, but also consumer demand for electric vehicles will rebound for these stocks. Here I'm showing the iShares self-driving EV and tech ETF, the IDRV. It's a nice well-rounded fund that holds a lot of those electric vehicle makers, as well as the related stocks in that. But I also like Rivian here, Rivian Automotive, as a one of the up-and-coming makers. A lot, of the, uh, a lot of the car makers, a lot of the EV makers, including Ford, Tesla, they're pulling back on their truck, uh, their truck production just because it's more expensive to, to create those, to produce those trucks, and they're just not seeing the profitability in it. I think that is a big opportunity for Rivian to take a bigger share of that EV truck market. ChargePoint, also one of my favorite stocks in the EV space here. They've got a real lock on that level two charging. They're also competing. Yes, they are competing with Tesla, but there is enough growth in that charging infrastructure infrastructure market. Charging infrastructure is the big bottleneck for EVs right now. It's going to be getting a lot of money from that government, from that IRA bill, and it's going to boost the uh, the stocks in this, including ChargePoint Holdings. And of course, Albemarle Corporation ticker ALB as well, the leader in that lithium production that is so important for the batteries. Another big bottleneck for EVs right now is that lithium production. I think Albemarle is going to do very well over the next few years. Turning it over to the, some of the stocks I'm watching specifically this week, Advanced Auto Parts, ticker AAP, going to be reporting its earnings on Wednesday, with the market expecting very little from a stock that has fallen 70% in the last year. Now, the stock is up 10% since highlighting it as one of my favorite short-term investments last month. I continue to hold shares on the rebound here. Shares of competitor O'Reilly Auto, ticker ORLY, jumped 6% on its positive earnings surprise, and, and retail sales reports or retail sales data for auto parts was generally good during the quarter. So I'm expecting a surprise upside to advanced auto parts here in the earnings call when it reports uh, this week on Wednesday. I believe shares of AAP are significantly underpriced too, as that new management comes in and stays is a turnaround. Alibaba Group, ticker BABA, also going to be reporting its earnings Thursday with the market expecting just a 10% rise in its earnings to $2.12 per share for the quarter. Full year earnings are expected around $9.08 a share, meaning the Chinese e-commerce leader is trading for just 9.1 times on a price to earnings basis. This is a stock growing its sales by 10% a year, is uh, breaking up into six different stocks. So it's going to have some strong investor sentiment boost from that as investors look forward to getting those six different stocks out of one. While there hasn't been very many positive signs of an economic recovery in the country, they have stimulus measures, both fiscal and monetary, that should help ignite growth. And, and Alibaba, again, already growing at 9% a year to boost this stock. Walmart, ticker WMT, always an important read into the health of the consumer, especially here when it reports earnings on Thursday. If expectations are any indication, it is likely to warn that consumers are f further pulling back and a bad sign for retailers in, during the all-important holiday season. Walmart is expected to report a 6% decline in earnings for the quarter on sales that are flat over last year. So this is going to be a negative for the, uh, for the market, for the economy, if they come out and do warn that consumers are pulling back and they could warn for fourth quarter sales. Again, like I said, also watching Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW, plunged 9.4%, 8 
2.6% here on Friday on that heavy volume, but really no news to speak of. There was nothing public that showed why this should have come down. Now, it's difficult to imagine that it could have all been another attack by short sellers. More than 32% of these shares are sold short by short sellers, so they have a very big, a very big incentive to uh, spread disinformation and fear in the markets and bring these, this stock down and make money. Uh, we are expecting news out from a California regulator on the company's recent deal announced with Prospect, but beyond that, recent earnings for MPW were undeniably good. Okay, debt is taken care of over the next year. They're going to be doing some asset sales to pay off the debt over the next couple of years. Again, this is the largest property, largest hospital property owner in the United States. Uh, is hospital real estate is very well positioned for the future demogra demographics. I like this stock, just don't know why it went down 8.6% here on Friday. Looking at the bigger picture here with the sectorspiders.com sector tracker over the last five days, you can see here that six of the 11 stock sectors did close higher last week with most of the sectors really playing the role that you would expect. Those rate sensitive, sensitive sectors like utilities and real estate once again underperformed just on a slight increase in interest rates, but also more of a give back up from the previous week's gains. Okay, utilities, real estate were the biggest winners in that week that saw the markets up 6% higher, saw interest rates really come down. So they did really well, just giving back a little bit more of that. Stocks in the energy sector, obviously plunging on the still lower crude prices. Crude prices falling about 5% down to $77 a barrel. Could fall further as oil finds a bottom. Again, I'm not investing in oil uh, very much just yet until oil hits right about $70 a barrel. I think that's a very good area of support where you can get into some of these oil stocks and do very well into the future as oil goes back up in an economic recovery, back up to 80 80, 90, and $100 a barrel. In technology stocks, it was those strong earnings reports that boosted shares. 94% of the companies in the technology sector have beaten their earnings expectations. The biggest trend in this earnings season, though, is something I want to highlight because it's very important for the stock outlook and investor sentiment. Here we are on the FactSet Earnings Insight. Great free report put out by FactSet uh, to cover earnings around earnings season every, every quarter. The biggest trend in earnings season has just been the punishment doled out to companies that have missed their earnings expectations expectations. Okay, here we see, as usual, most companies, about 82% so far, have reported earnings per share above Wall Street estimates for the last quarter. That is in line with uh, with previous history. Those companies have beaten expectations by an average of 7%, which is slightly below the five-year average. Five-year average for how much companies usually beat expectations is about 8.5%. Uh, but that is right around how many companies usually beat expectations. The difference here is, and, and those have been rewarded by seeing their stock price up about 0.8% on the news. So when a company over the last, uh, so over this earnings season, when a company beats its earnings expectations, it's seen its stock price go up by about 0.8%. That's about the same as the five-year average, which is about 0.9% on the day. Now, what is unusual, and I want to scroll down and show you this chart because it is really interesting. What is unusual here is that the average 5.2% plunge in shares for companies missing expectations. Okay, we see that on the right here. We see on the left, those beating their earnings estimates, a positive outcome in their earnings surprises, up 0.8% versus the average of 0.9%. Here on the right, those missing expectations. So those companies coming out in their earnings report saying, hey, we didn't do as well as we or the market thought, they are seeing their stocks fall 5.2% against average 2.3%. So right now, investors are selling out of stocks that miss their earnings expectations, have no patience for management that cannot, uh, cannot support or cannot beat those earnings expectations. If you want a good example here, for example, shares of Tesla dropped 16% when it reported just 66 cents per share, which was just four cents below the 70 cents per share estimate by analysts. Okay, so Tesla missed their earnings estimates by just four cents a share. The market sold off that stock by 16%. Tesla shares dropped 16% that day. The market clearly has no patience for companies that are not firing on all cylinders here and beating expectations. Big news of this week is obviously going to be that CPI, that Consumer Price Index report coming out on Wednesday. It's expecting the core CPI, okay, so the, the inflation over the last year, minus food and gasoline prices, which are very volatile, can move that up and down uh, in any given month. But the core CPI there expected to come in at 4.1% year over year, so 4.1% inflation year over year. It'd be about the same as last month. The headline number, which includes that food and gasoline, is expected to drop to 33 3% in October. That's much lower than the 3.7% we saw in September. 
So a report as expected or maybe even a little lower on those lower gas prices last month would be a very strong signal to the market. The Fed is done hiking its interest rates and can boost stocks further. Check out the link below for arrived homes and see how I'm investing in rental property right now. Get more information and get on that notification list for when more investments are available. Or click on the video to the right for the seven future dividend aristocrats. Dividend stocks to buy now before they get added. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.